This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Alright, wait a second. So I've updated my setup, but before we get here, let me take you through the build process and then I'll give you a tour of the new setup. Last year I built what I thought was my dream desk setup, but I was wrong. I didn't have enough space to charge all my equipment and my black tabletop was getting too dusty too often. Plus I had to add this thing, which is probably my biggest upgrade. Why is a computer from 2009 my biggest upgrade? Well, you'll have to watch to find out. Alright, to start off the build, I wanted to change up the desk. I've been using this black desk for the last 5 years, and honestly, it's been pretty solid. Besides this mystery scratch that appeared in the middle, it's held up really nicely. But one gripe I do have with this tabletop is that it gets dusty. Real dusty. So I wanted something that could hide the dust a bit better, and I wanted something with a bit more texture. In the time-honored tradition of repurposing IKEA's non-office tabletops into a desk, I picked up an Ek Bakken tabletop, which is actually a laminated kitchen workbench, but the concrete laminate is so nice, I just had to use it for this setup. I'm reusing the OmniDesk sit-stand legs that I already have, so I just had to switch the tabletops over. But since there were no pre-drilled holes, there was a bit of measuring involved. With the table back together, I reinstalled the monitors back to the desk. Monitor arms are a great way to give the whole setup a clean look. Not only does it free up space on the desk, but floating monitors just look cool. I'm still using the Dell MSA20 arms, but whatever you choose, just make sure you pick something with a decent cable management option. And if possible, one way you can detach the cable covers without screws, so you can easily access the cables. And I've actually decided to cut down from 3 monitors to 2. Don't get me wrong, I'm all about screen real estate. I love having a big spreadsheet open while looking over some documents and still having space to use Notion and Spotify on the side. But the view from the desk can be a little overwhelming, so I'm trying out something new. While everything was still clear, I took the opportunity to apply some lighting to the shelving behind me and install a charging station. I got a couple questions on the last video asking how I attached the pegboard. So while I have the shelf out, the pegboard is actually attached to this backplate and the whole thing just sits on top of these braces. Cololite was kind enough to send me some of their strip lights as well as their mix range, which I'll be using later on. So attaching this was actually trickier than I thought it'd be because of the bracing on my shelves, which meant I had to pick up some washers to add a bit of space behind the shelf. After that, sticking on the strip lights themselves were relatively simple. It just involved cutting them to size and sticking them on. Of course, I do recommend wiping the area down with some alcohol to get rid of any grime first. On my last desk setup, I incorporated a charging station into my build, and I actually ended up finding it even more useful than I initially thought it'd be. Nothing slows you down more than trying to start a task by picking up a device and then realizing it's out of juice. So a charging station is just a really easy way to make sure everything is topped up because everything returns here at the end of the day. Powering the charging station, I'm using a couple of Ugreen's Nexode Pro chargers. Ugreen has just released the Nexode Pro line with a variety of different models, including a 65W model that comes in a standard and ultra slim size, as well as the larger 100W and 160W sizes. The new line features Ugreen's GAN Infinity technology, so compared to a stock charger from Apple, the Nexode Pro chargers are a lot smaller and even have multiple ports so you can charge more than one device at the same time. Besides using them in a charging station, the smaller size also makes them fantastic to use on the go. And there's no need to take a whole bunch of separate chargers because of the Nexode Pro's multiple ports, so it's a real space saver in your tech bag. Of course, when it comes to chargers, it's about speed as well. Both the 65W models feature two USB-C ports and one USB-A port to deliver a combined 65 watts of power, which Ugreen says can charge an M2 MacBook Air from 0 to 51% in 30 minutes during single port use, while the 100W charger delivers even more power. Ugreen says it charges a 14-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 57% in that same time. But if you want the most charging capacity, you'll probably want to take a look at the 160W model. Not only does it charge a 16-inch MacBook Pro from 0-86% to 86 within 60 minutes, but it also has an additional USB-C port, so you can charge even more devices, like an additional laptop. The series also supports Super Fast Charging 2.0, which means you can charge a Samsung phone with a full 45 watts of power delivery. Thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check out these chargers. On my desk, I decided to go with the slimmer version of the Orbikey desk mat to protect the desk from any scratches. Plus, it's just a really nice surface to work on, 
and the perfect spot for my peripherals, like the low free block and the MX vertical. It's been a while since I've used the mechanical keyboard on the daily and I've kind of missed it. But the standout feature is undoubtedly the low free blocks unique retro styling that brings so much character to the setup. And I wanted to look after my wrists so I picked up a wrist rest from Amazon with a hidden storage compartment and I also picked up a Logitech MX vertical. I do have some hesitations about using a vertical mouse, it just seems really different. But I've always thought it was a cool looking mouse so I want to see if it's actually going to be better for my wrist. Of course, I always recommend a good quality dock when working with a laptop in a desktop setup to easily connect multiple monitors and accessories. Since I'm no longer using three monitors, I've switched from the BenQ hybrid dock back to the A-Logic Blaze, so I don't need to run DisplayLink. And to eliminate the need to handle cables completely, I'm pairing the A-Logic Blaze with this dock from Azchrono, which features power and Thunderbolt 4 pass-through, meaning connecting my MacBook up to the desktop is as easy as sliding my MacBook into place. That's right. My go-to laptop of choice is still the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. A little over two years now and the M1 Pro is still holding strong. And I've moved my latest PC build here on the PC Caddy from Ikea. Yes, attaching it to the desk itself gives the setup a clean look, but it's kind of hard to access the cables in the back when you need to shift things around. So for now, I'm sticking with the PC Caddy in this setup. With most of the desk set up, it was time to clean things up with a bit of cable management. I'm using an under desk organizer, which Okiwood was kind enough to supply, along with a bunch of awesome goodies for the desk. It's always hard to hide your cables when you don't have the desk up against the wall, but this kind of organizer makes it really easy to keep things tidy by giving you a way to tie everything down. I also picked up a couple extra cable management accessories off Amazon, like these adhesive cable straps, which I really like because you can easily undo them if you need to add more cables. And I also picked up some expandable cable sleeves for the cables that connect to the PC, which really clean things up while leaving enough slack to use the desk in the standing position. I'm pretty happy with the results overall. Finishing up the setup, I began work on this LEGO Ornithopter. And let me geek out for a second because this thing is seriously cool. So this is the Ornithopter from the movie Dune, and the design of the Ornithopter is already pretty cool. But it comes complete with opening cabin doors, a retractable landing gear, and retractable flapping wings. I mean, the engineering on this thing is just so cool. Alright, to add some warmth to the setup, I added some books, lights, and some of Oki Wood's accessories. These are handcrafted Oki accessories from their Oki Blocks line, which is a system that includes different sized trays for your common desk accessories, but also includes this awesome incognito wireless charger. And what's great about this system is that they're all precisely made so that they perfectly align with one another, and they've also got magnets built in, so they stay stuck together for a really nice, cohesive look. Alright, with everything complete, let me walk you through the setup for 2024. Building the perfect desk setup is a bit of a never ending task. My tastes and workflows are always changing. So I'm always looking to build a better looking, better functioning desk setup. And this is what I've come up with this year. The desk itself is pretty simple. I'm reusing my OmniDesk sit stand table legs that sit on some caster wheels that I picked up from Amazon for added flexibility. With the new Ekbuck and Tabletop from Ikea. The desk has four programmable presets, two of which I've used for sitting and standing, and one that's in between that makes it a bit easier if I need to eat at my desk. Honestly, it's a bit of an underrated use case. Have you tried eating noodle soup at your desk? It's not easy. And I definitely don't want to scratch up the new tabletop, so I'm using a slim desk mat from OrbitKey. I'd been using the previous desk mat for a little while now, and the only real issue I had with it was that its magnetic cable holder would get in the way sometimes. It's really a personal use case thing, but I really like the fact that the slim version moves that off to the side and still retains most of the things from the original desk mat, like its soft vegan leather finish, hideaway layer for documents, and of course, that cable organizer. Above the desk, I'm running two monitors. These are the Dell 3221QSs. Honestly, they're not the most exciting monitors. I got them primarily for productivity work, so they don't have a super high refresh rate or anything, but I think they're fantastic monitors for most users. The picture quality is decent and they're quite reasonably priced, especially if you can get them on sale. And I've got the monitors attached to the A-Logic Blaze Thunderbolt 4 dock, something that I do recommend because it takes the hassle out of connecting your laptop to your desk setup. With just one cable, the A-Logic Blaze delivers 96 watts of power and connects my MacBook Pro to all of its ports, like its three Thunderbolt ports, the four USB-A ports, SD card slot, 
and the 3.5 millimeter combo jack. And of course, you can use the A-Logic Blaze on its own, but I've paired it with an AS Chrono dock, so I can connect the MacBook to all of the peripherals without handling any cables. Peripherals like the low free block and the MX vertical. Like I said, I really miss the feeling of typing on a mechanical keyboard, which is why I'm using the low free block. It's a pre-built 98 key wireless keyboard, which I think definitely draws a huge inspiration from keyboards of the 90s. And I have to say, I really like the look of this keyboard. And I think the unique retro styling and orange accents definitely make it a centerpiece of this setup. The keyboard features full POM switches, which Lofree made in collaboration with TTC. And the typing experience is right down my alley. It's definitely more of a thocky sound profile rather than a clicky one, but whether or not you like it is personal preference, so take a listen for yourself. The only keys I don't really like the feel of are the big keys on the numpad that are a little stiff. For me though, the block has most of the key features I'm looking for. I work with a lot of spreadsheets, so a keyboard with a numpad is a must. And obviously since I use both a PC and a Mac, I like that the low free block is able to support both the PC and Mac keyboard layouts. In fact, Lofree has put a lot of thought into connectivity, which I do appreciate. You have the option of connecting up to five devices, one wired, one through the dongle, and three via Bluetooth. The connection status is shown on the LED panel, along with the battery life and the caps and numlock status, although brightness of the panel is not fantastic. It does look pretty cool when you can see it though. It kind of reminds me of the Braun DN40 alarm clock that was designed by Dita Rams. Pretty cool. Also cool is the MX Vertical. This is a mouse I've always been curious about. It's definitely not a mouse you see every day, but the way its seashell-esque design catches the light makes it a really cool looking mouse. More importantly, the MX Vertical claims to be healthier for your wrist, taking your forearm out of the pronated position. I'm not gonna lie, it does feel a bit strange to use, and from initial use, I actually think my wrist is more tense because using this mouse feels so different but I'll have to use it more to give my final thoughts. Make sure you subscribe if you want to hear the results. I was a bit worried I was going to miss the horizontal scroll wheel on the MX Master, but I remapped one of the buttons to a pan gesture which works just as well, if not even better. Behind me, I now have my charging station, which really makes life a lot easier. I have more than enough cables to charge anything I need, like my camera, AirPods, batteries, and laptops. To manage the overwhelming amount of cables at the station, I'm using some magnetic cables from MagTame. I think they're primarily meant for travel, but the built-in magnets make it really easy to coil and uncoil, so it's a great way to keep the charging station clean. Also on the shelves are a couple of cool items, like the new LEGO Ornithopter and my old Nintendo DS which is lit up by the color light mix. Along with the color light strip lights which I've attached to the back of the shelves, these lights set the atmosphere in the room and can be controlled through the Color Light phone app or through a smart home assistant like Google Home. Which brings me to the last addition to my setup and in my opinion, the biggest upgrade. And that is this old computer which I've converted to a NAS running Unraid. I built this because there was a sale for some 18 terabyte hard drives in my area that I just couldn't pass up. I've always wanted to experience storage freedom and for now, it's more than enough space to store all my photos, files and footage that I film for this channel. It's not the best looking thing, but the old school features are kind of quirky, like this CD drive and these knobs that manually adjust the fan speed on the case. And that's my setup for 2024. These are the changes that I've made to help improve my workflow, and I hope it'll give you guys some ideas for your setups as well. I'll leave a link to everything in the video description if you guys want to check anything out. Let me know what you guys think about the setup in the comments, and make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Alright, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.